Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on linear and nonlinear functions, and the objective is to determine whether a function is linear or, well, nonlinear. Our real world link is on football. The table shows the approximate height and horizontal distance traveled by a football kicked at an angle of 30 degrees with an initial velocity of 30 yards per second. Our first question asks us Did the football travel the same? height each half second. Well, here are our heights in the table. And if we look, we have from the first, from zero, that is, to half a second, we increased by six and two tenths. But the next half second, we only increased by three and a half seconds. So is that the same height? No. So our answer is no. The first half second the balls change in height was 6.2 yards and the change in height was three and a half yards the next half second. So it did not travel the same height. Here it increased by six and two tenths. The next one increased by three and five tenths. And as you go through the table, you can see that it actually goes up and then goes back down. Did the football travel the same length each half second? Well, let's look. From 0 to 13, we increased by 13. From 13 to 26, we increased by 13. Now, don't just stop there. Don't go, oh, look, those two had stayed the same rate of change. The rate of change was the same, so it must. No, keep looking. We increased by 13 there, another 13 between 39 and 52, and another 13 between 52 and 65. So was our rate of change the same? Yes. The football travels a length of 13 yards each half second. Now we want to graph the ordered pairs with time and height and time and length on separate grids. Connect the point to the straight line or smooth curve. Then compare the graphs. Well, our first graph is labeled the height, so let's go ahead and use our height. Our first point is zero, zero. Then we have half a second and 6.2, so that's gonna be right around here. And then one second was nine and seven tenths, which is close to 10 right there. The one and a half seconds was ten and a half, so that's right around here. And then two seconds was eight and seven tenths. Right around here. And two and a half seconds was four and two tenths, which is right about here. So we can draw actually a smooth curve here through these points. pretty close at least, might be easier on paper than on the iPad. Next, we have our length. So we have zero seconds, zero yards again. Half a second, 13 yards. One second, 26 yards. 
one and a half seconds, 39 yards. Two seconds, 52 yards. And two and a half seconds, 65 yards. And so we can connect these with a straight line. So as we look to compare the graphs, the graph for the height of the football is a curve and then I'm going to write the next one just above that the graph for total distance is linear so as we look at linear and nonlinear functions, here we have an example. The height is nonlinear, whereas the length, the distance traveled, is linear. In a previous lesson, you learned that linear functions have graphs that are straight lines. This is because the rate of change between any two data points is constant. Now, nonlinear functions are functions whose rate of change are not constant. Therefore, their graphs are not straight lines. So determine whether each table represents a linear or nonlinear function and explain. Now our goal here is going to be to look at the rates of changes here. So in A, from 20 to 16, I'm decreasing by 4. From 16 to 12, I'm decreasing by 4. And from 12 to 8, I'm decreasing by 4. From 0 to 5, I'm increasing by 5. From 5 to 10, I'm increasing by 5. And from 10 to 15, I'm increasing by 5 again. So my rates of change here, remember, it's usually our change in y over our change in x. We have negative 4 fifths, negative 4 fifths, and negative 4 fifths. So since these rates of change are the same, we can say that this is a linear function. Again, since the rates of change are all the same. And we can write that. The rate of change is constant And to finish our explanation, we can say as y decreases by 4, x increases by 5. Now what about our next function? Let's look for our changes here. Our change in y from 0 to 2 is, well, we're adding 2. From 2 to 8, we're adding 6. And from 8 to 18, we're adding 10. Now, that alone doesn't mean that we're nonlinear. We also have to look at our changes in the x's. So from 0 to 2, we're adding 2. From 2 to 4, we're adding 2. And from 4 to 6, we're adding 2. So as we look for our rates of change, Again, our y over our x, we have 2 over 2, 6 over 2, and 10 over 2. Well, those are different. So we're going to say that this is a non-linear function. And our explanation can be the rate of change is not constant. And the last piece 
our x is increasing by the same amount each time. So we can say as x increases by 2, y increases by a larger amount each time. So again, if you're looking for linear versus nonlinear, when your rates of change are the same, it's a linear function. When your rates of change are different, it is a nonlinear function. Now we can use the concept of linear versus nonlinear functions in order to solve a real world problem. Tickets to the school dance cost $5 per student. Are the ticket sales a linear function of the number of tickets sold and explain? Well, let's look for our rates of change once again. Well, our number of tickets sold are increasing by one each time. And our ticket sales are increasing by $5 each time. So we're increasing at $5 per one ticket here, and we're increasing by $5 per one ticket from 2 to 3 as well. So our rates of change are once again constant. So are the ticket sales a linear function of the number of tickets sold? Our answer is going to be an emphatic yes. The rate of change is constant. As the number of tickets sold increases by one, the total sales or total ticket sales increases by five dollars. So again, we're looking for the rates of change, our y over our x, so five dollars per one ticket. Every ticket sold increases our ticket sales by five dollars. So another example of a linear function. A square has a side length of s inches. The perimeter of the square is a function of the side length. Does the situation represent a linear or nonlinear function? Well, let's draw ourselves a square. Or at least we'll try. And this square has a side length of s inches. Well, let's go ahead and create ourselves a table where we're going to have our side length, S, and our perimeter, P. Well, if we have a side length of 1, our perimeter is going to be, well, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, or 4 times 1 is 4. If we have a side length of 2, well, that would be 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, or 2 times 4, which is 8. If our side length is 3, well, that would be 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, or 3 times 4 is 12. And we'll stop there. Now let's look at these rates of change. Our perimeter is increasing by 4 each time while our side length is increasing by 1. So our rates of change is 4 over 1 and, once again, 4 over 1. So is this a linear function? I would say yes, it is linear. And 
you can say the rates, the rate of change is constant as the side length increases by one the total perimeter or just perimeter increases by four and another way to solve this besides a table is to use a graph because if you were to draw a quick graph one two three and this will be our side length and we'll just go up 4, 8, 12. You could also graph and just look. You go, okay, well, if my side length, we'll label the side perimeter. If our side length is 1, our perimeter is 4. If our side length is 2, our perimeter is 8. And if our side length is 3, our perimeter is 12. Is that linear? Yeah, it's a line. It's a line. So it's another way of doing this. So when given a more open-ended question, such as the square with a side length and perimeter, you can create yourself a table. You can draw yourself a graph in order to look for the rates of change. If you're creating the table, you're going to solve it just like we've solved most of the examples in this lesson. You're going to look for the actual rates of change. But you could also just start with the graph and see if it is linear, and this time it is. Now here's a bonus slide since the few examples we've done deal with mainly linear functions. But what if we start with the same thing and we start with a square? We're going to label the side S, but this time we're looking for area to try to see if area is a linear or nonlinear function. Well, let's start with a graph this time. And we're going to do side length on the bottom and area with our y-axis. And our side length can be 1, 2, 3, and 4. And let's just count up by, uh, let's count up by 2's with our area here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and we're going to extend all the way up to 16. Now, how do you find area? Well, area is length times width or width is square, just the side squared. So if we had a side length of 1, 1 times 1 is just 1. If we had a side length of 2, 2 times 2 is 4. A side length of 3, 3 times 3 is 9. And 4 times 4 is 16. Now, can I fit a straight line here? Nope. That would be the straight line in my laser here. So what this actually is, is an example of a non-linear non function. Sorry about the hiccup there. So some examples will be linear. Some examples will be nonlinear. That's it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.